We are excited for the opportunity to review the newest feature of Jamf Now, app usage. This feature has been available since late October, and we've seen a ton of positive feedback so far. The team here is excited to walk through a few real life app usage workflows today and answer any questions you might have. Before we dive in, let me introduce the team here at Jamf helping to provide and support today's webinar. I'm Leah from the Jamf Now customer success team here to walk us through today's content around app usage and help out during the Q&A. Our support engineer Chaz will be walking us through the workflows for setting up app usage on blueprints and applying the settings to a device. In the demo, he will showcase each unique element of the app usage feature and how it might be used. Veronica from our business development team will be moderating the chat during the webinar. Please feel free to drop any questions you might have in the chat as we go along. And we will review and answer them near the end of the presentation. Let's get started. All right, so before we get into the details, we wanted to give you a quick product overview of Jamf Now to help you understand how everything works. To those of you who are brand new to Jamf, Jamf Now is a mobile device management software that works over the air with Apple to deploy specific directions and commands to your users' Apple devices. How does that all happen? Apple determines the mobile device management framework, and the talented team here at Jamf Now builds our software within that framework to enable people like you to perform device management tasks in an easy way. Using Jamf Now enables you to set up new devices using zero-touch deployment, meaning that no one other than the person ultimately using the device is required to touch it to set it up. Additionally, Jamf Now helps with app management, basic security functions, device inventory management, and more. This app usage feature adds significant value to an already simple to use, efficient product. The feature provides the ability to create unique device configurations targeted toward a focused work environment for iPhones and iPads in your environment. As Chaz will demonstrate in a moment, to enable app usage, the Jamf Now administrator simply selects which apps they would like to enable or disable within Blueprints, then saves the changes to deploy the settings to devices within that Blueprint. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Chaz for a demo of how app usage looks within Jamf Now and on your devices. Chaz? Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Chaz. I'm here to demo app usage and how you can use it alongside the management of your devices. The objective of this demo is kind of twofold. We're trying to show two different scenarios and ways that we could utilize app, app usage for managed devices and to kind of paint a better picture of, of how it can be used. We're going to kind of mock act as a construction company uh, with limiting certain uh, app accessibility for managed devices. So to break down uh, app usage, we're going to jump into our blueprint and we can see here on the left hand side too, we have uh, my iPad as well. That's kind of just like a live video recording of its screen. Um, but yeah, to, to utilize uh, app usage, we'll go to blueprints, select our blueprint that we want to configure app usage on. We'll go to the restrictions section of uh, the blueprints and then app usage will live right here as its own section under restrictions. When we click on it, we are met with three options. Uh, allow all apps is just kind of the default setting that is not pushing anything because all devices by default allow whatever apps come pre-installed. Our second option that we have is hide some apps, which can come in handy when you want to hide certain apps on a managed iOS device. And the final option we have for, for app usage uh, is only allowing some apps, which again can, can be beneficial or valuable when maybe certain devices, you only want them to have a select few apps visible or usable on the device. And, and that's a scenario where you'd go ahead and use that. Um, and then when it comes to selecting what apps you want to, to limit, you would just go to add an app and you're met with three different sections. One is the default apps, which are apps that come pre-installed on iOS devices. You have managed apps, which are the apps that are uh, stored in your app library over on the left-hand side, and then the app store, which you can locate any app that's hosted in the app store uh, to either hide it or only allow it on your devices. 
So in the first scenario that we're going to kind of be breaking down um, to paint a picture of 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 a of a you know a reason why you'd use app usage is uh, we're a construction company. We want to grant our users the ability to sign into their own iCloud accounts on these devices, but we want to make sure that they're not downloading any social media type apps because we want to ensure that. The apps, if they do need to download a, a certain app from the App Store, that it's a productive app that we're granting them access to install and download, rather than you know go on the App Store, download Facebook, download Snapchat, download Twitter, and and use a device for that purpose. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide some apps, and the apps that we're going to hide are social media apps. We'll select the hide some apps option. We will go to add an app. And once met with this page, we will enter our apps that we want to hide. Um, I want to make sure we do a full search so we can actually get the Twitter app. So we added Twitter, we add Facebook, and we add Snapchat. One thing to note before I go to the bottom here and hit save changes is this device that I already have configured and enrolled in Jamf now it has Facebook and Twitter installed, and these are two apps that I downloaded myself manually from the App Store using this Jamf test iCloud account that we see signed in right here. And uh, we also have two other apps. We have Procore and we have Outlook that are managed and pushed through Jamf now. So with this Hide Some Apps app usage configuration configured in the way that it is right now, when I hit save changes, which I will hear shortly, I'll do that right now in case there's uh, time that it needs to take for this device to apply that change. But what we should expect to see is we should expect to see both Facebook and Twitter removed from the device because hide some apps, we're choosing hiding Facebook, hiding Twitter. And um, once hidden, we'll even go and, and try to hide and download Snapchat as well. So. Looks like it already applied it. If we look at this device, we no longer see Facebook. We lo no longer see Twitter. If we go to settings and scroll towards the bottom, we can see the two apps that we have uh, installed on this device are Outlook and Procore. Previously, if we would have checked under here, we would have seen uh, Twitter and Facebook, but these app uh, management settings tabs are no longer uh, visible, which means they're hidden from the device and they cannot be accessed. Now, if we even wanted to take this test a little bit further, we could even go to the App Store. We could try to download Snapchat, for instance. Oop, not that. Snapchat, top option. Already have downloaded in the past, but if I go to download it, it will begin the download process and try to install it on the device. Uh, but it will never appear on the device, and that's just due to the restriction that we have enforce on the device. So going back to the, our scenario that we were talking about, we're granting these users the ability to use the App Store, but we're ensuring that they're not installing certain apps that we don't want them to be installing. So that's valuable in itself. And then if even if we wanted to, we could try to like spotlight search for Facebook. It'll come up as an App Store um, recommendation. And if we go to try to open it, nothing will happen. And I'll just open up the app store to try to show you to install it. But Facebook will never open because it says restrictions enabled. Certain apps, features, or services can't be seen or used when restrictions are on. So this is what your users would experience when interacting with a um, app usage restriction that is enforced on the device. Now changing, um, Changing it up here, we're going to dig into only allow some apps. And let me remove these quick before we dig into that. But again, the second option, only allow some apps. This is valuable, for instance, if you want to configure a device that only has access to maybe a select three or four uh, user critical apps that our users are going to be using on a daily basis. Um, again, looping back to our construction example, Maybe we only want our, our users having access to Procore, Outlook, uh, Calendar, and that's it. And that's what they use on, on their day-to-day -day basis. And, and past that, they shouldn't be using their devices for anything but that. To do that, that is something we can definitely do. And to do so, we would do only allow some apps. We would select the apps that we, that we only want them to use. So in this case, we'll select Calendar. 
which is under this default apps list because this is a natively installed app for iOS. And then managed apps, we're gonna choose our Outlook and our Procore, which are two managed apps that we have under our managed apps tab there. So once this, uh, once this restriction is applied, we'll hit save changes, we'll apply it to the device, and shortly here, once this device does receive this change, we should see pretty much everything on the device become hidden, except for Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, Procore, and then the Settings app. The Settings app, depending on what iOS version you have installed, will sometimes be hidden, will sometimes not be hidden. Just kind of comes down to how Apple processes this, uh, this only allows some apps MDM command to, to function once applied to to a device. So we'll kind of give the device a second or so to, to apply this restriction because, um, again, device communication, as Leah pointed out in the beginning of the slide, JF now pushes these configurations to the device when the device considers itself uh, abil or, uh, when it considers itself available to apply it, it will do so. We just saw the inventory happen. The device now shows four apps as available. We see Calendar, we see Outlook, we see settings, we see Procore. Pass that, there is nothing else on the device. Siri has some app suggestions, but you can't use those apps. This is all that's available on the device. And this is only allows some apps in its uh, truest form. There are some final thoughts and recommendations that we wanna give before we flip it back to Leah on best use and also just some tips and tricks. One thing to note is in this scenario, the App Store is removed uh, as well, which kind of just comes along with only allowing some apps if we're not including the App Store on here. Um, you know, it's gonna not show the App Store as available. So the apps that we see here are gonna be the apps that we're gonna expect to be on the device statically and forever, unless we make a change on the Jamf Now side of things. Um, one, Critical recommendation too that we that we recommend as well is is auto enrolling your device when made available to do so. Auto enrollment is a function of uh, of Apple Business Manager, where if you own a device and it's tied to your Business Manager account, you can connect it under the auto enrollment tab. You can see your devices that are auto enrollment qualified, and uh, any auto enrolled device, mainly why it's applicable here, will have the MDM profile non removable. So you can be certain that once you place this restriction on this device, the user can't go under settings and remove it. So auto enrollment, very valuable, very important for ensuring that the settings that you're pushing are not being removed from the device. Um, also wanted to touch on that there are different locations in Jamf now for restricting apps, such as if, again, we, we tapped away from app usage and now we're going up to the app section up top. Uh, we have disable installing apps on device. This is just another way to hide the app store. Um, you could hide the camera, you could hide FaceTime, you could hide Safari. These are also options that you have available to you when it comes to restricting devices. And it kind of just comes down to how you prefer to restrict access to these apps. Because say for instance, if you were to hide Safari under app usage and disable Safari under this tab, you know, both restrictions would apply, nothing would break it just you're applying two restrictions at one time for the device so don't don't be uh confused or or worried that you could be breaking something for pushing the same restriction because that's shouldn't be a thing and lastly one uh best practice when it comes to app usage is also checking disable deleting apps if your device is supervised which it is to use app usage in the first place app usage requires supervision if you also enable disable deleting apps, you can ensure that, you know, in this scenario that we have with this iPad, we have four apps. We don't want these apps being removed by our end users. We want this to be the baseline for what our devices look like. And this is what we want to expect when we unlock it to see what exists on the device. So disable deleting apps, very valuable. That's all I had for you guys during the demo today. I'm sure you guys will have some questions in our follow-up uh, Q&A. So I'll toss it back to Leah and uh, start thinking about some good questions to ask. Great. Thank you so much, Chaz. Before we move on, I wanted to touch on a few important points worth repeating from Chaz's demo. 
Um, to touch on the feature itself, hiding some apps can come in handy for scenarios like ensuring users aren't consuming valuable cellular network data. So you can hide just your streaming apps like Hulu and Netflix. In contrast, allowing only certain apps can be helpful for scenarios like creating a focused workstation for folks in the transportation industry. Those drivers might only need maps, driver logs, and Google available on their devices for their jobs. So it, it allows you as the Jamf Now administrator to create a very focused work environment on those devices. And finally, that settings, um, the settings app cannot be hidden on a device. Uh, additional restrictions within Jamf Now can be applied to ensure that users aren't able to make any unwanted changes to anything within settings, but the settings app itself must remain on the device. And it's also worth reminding that app usage does require device supervision. There are two ways to supervise your devices. We'll send both workflows in our follow-up to this webinar tomorrow. Um, but I just wanted to point out that the main way of supervision that most of our customers use is using the auto enrollment through Apple Business Manager. If you have any questions around supervising your devices or would like any help implementing the workflows to have your devices supervised, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're always here to help. Finally, we wanted to touch briefly on single app mode versus app usage. Single app mode is one of our most popular features and we believe it's worth a moment to cover the differences on a high level. So if you're in a situation where you want your iPad or iPhone to function as a kiosk, that's when single app mode comes into play. If you have any more than one application that you would like your end users to use, that's when we would recommend using the app usage feature. These restrictions are very similarly structured and styled, but they have completely different experiences for your end user. So if you have any questions about what might be most appropriate for your use case, again, reach out, we're happy to help. All right, so just to review a few key takeaways from today's content, uh, the app usage feature applies to all apps, for everything from the apps that are preloaded on your Apple devices to any apps you're managing in your Jamf Now instance, and literally all of the apps available for public use in the App Store hosted by Apple. Again, supervision is required so that you can utilize the app usage feature on your iPhone and iPad devices in your environment. And then finally, the app usage feature does not delete apps from the devices, it simply hides them. So if you had an app available on a device and you've then elected to hide it using Jamf Now, it will still consume storage space on the device, it, it will still uh, hold all of the data associated with the app on that device. Your end user will just simply not have that app available to them for use on that device. All right, and recapping the resources we're going to send in our follow-up email. Tomorrow, we'll send um, some great resources linked to our knowledge base. Uh, we'll be sure to include our technical support email address as well as workflow support, us at success at jamfnow.com. And if you would like any individual assistance incorporating these workflows into your device management strategy, please reach out. We're always happy to help and a link to this recording will also be available. We'll see if we can get that managed Apple ID, Apple support article included as well. All right, great. Thank you all for spending time with us today. We uh, hope you have a great holiday season and a prosperous new year. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.